This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist right here in Honolulu. And I am tickled because I don't remember the last time, if, even if there was a last time, that I had somebody else who's also a licensed marriage and family therapist. And uh, we're going to have a great time today uh, talking shop. So uh, welcome, Richard Todd Rents. Thank you. Thank you for having me. LMFT. It's a pleasure. So let's get right down to it. Okay. Um, tell me about yourself. Uh, where are you from? So I'm originally from a small town in southwest Georgia uh, called Bainbridge. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I come from a family of farmers, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, most of my family stayed in that path, and I decided to venture out. So... So do you still have family there? I still do, yes. I do. And, and why don't you sound like Jimmy Carter? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because my mom used to say, oh, well, you never sounded like us. So I was the very unique child that kind of was, that stuck out. So, um, but then I also moved to Atlanta after living in Southwest Georgia for about 19 years. And, so and, kind of after high school. Yeah, I went to college up there at uh, Georgia State University. Uh-huh. And then from there, I... Did you study psychology then? I didn't, actually. I actually studied journalism uh -huh. with a fo focus in public relations. And so <clears throat> around that time, it was about 9-11 happened. So job market oh. was pretty, pretty rough about that time. So I stopped doing that for a while, and I actually got connected to um, my mentor, Dr. Lynn Hammond Gray. And she was a spiritual counselor. And that's how I got into the, the field of psychology. So what do you mean when you say spiritual counselor? So she was more Jungian. She would focus more like on um, archetypes. Oh, like Carl Jung. Yeah, Carl oh, Jung, yeah. yes. So explain what do you mean by archetypes? So archetypes are maybe these individuals are these, uh, not I guess not idols, but somewhat um, something that we feel connected to and we can build upon a story. Like for me, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the hero's journey. I think the hero's journey is amazing. And that was by Joseph Campbell. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that, uh, that I find comfort in is comic books. And I know comic so books. So I was are, just thinking Superman. Yeah, right? Superman or Wonder Woman, I think. Uh -huh. So those are archetypes. Yeah, totally. So symbols for us. Symbols for us, yeah, totally. All right, so what, what came after that? So um, after I worked with her, I worked with couples and I worked with families, um, doing spiritual counseling, doing experiential stuff. Um, I then decided that I wanted to go back to school. So I got a master's in organizational psychology. Oh. Yep. And um, was that there? That was that was there. Yeah. And it was just not it was not the direction I wanted to go. There was something else that I wanted. So that's like working with companies, people with companies. Working with companies, doing assessments with yeah. companies, but it just wasn't what I was feeling. There was uh -huh. something something else I was looking for. Uh -huh. um, so I moved here in about 2009. Now, people have particular reason why they come to Hawaii. I mean, it's not like you just get on the bus. Why Hawaii? I felt like I needed to break away from my family. <laughs> so you went as far as you can go and still yeah. be in America. <laughs> I, was, I was only four hours away when I was living in Atlanta, and uh, I just felt like I, I felt like I was giving too much of myself to my family. I was taking care of my mom and my dad at the time. My dad had a stroke mm. and left him completely you know, paralyzed on his left side. Mm. Um, I, was still, I was still like working and paying for their bills and everything, but it was, just, it was, it was tremendous for me. It was too much Why, for me. Why, you were taking care of them? Yeah. Became the parentified child, you know, as they How say. How old were you then? I was about 30 years old when that happened. And you were the only child? Yes, only child. Wow. So um, I wanted to get as far away as, <laughs> like you said, so I thought Hawaii would be an ideal Had place. Had you ever been here before? Never, Did never. you know people here? No. I just decided that I had a call to adventure, as Joseph really? Campbell would so say. So you came yeah. here knowing nobody? Knowing no one. Nope. People that do that amaze me. <laughs> really? You just said, oh, I'm going to go to Hawaii and see what happens. Yep. Yeah. And it turned out to be a tremendous experience. Like, I, I love it here. It's just, to me, this is home. Mm. And well, what did you do when you got off the plane? When I got off the plane, I, um, I sought people out. 
and I just sort of like let the universe kind of guide me towards whomever or whomever would guide themselves to me, you know, and just and just you know just kind of go with the flow of things. And um, I had actually been talking to. Argosy University while I was in Georgia. Ah, okay. So, so this is where this comes in. <laughs> so you had a plan to go to school, maybe? Yes, I had a plan to go to school. Uh -huh. um, I was looking at the marriage and family therapy program because I felt like that was calling me for some reason after the um, organizational psychology master's. And I felt like I needed to work on some family issues. I was kind of concerned that I was too enmeshed with my family. Uh-huh, yeah, especially after taking care of them. Yeah, totally. So um, I visited Argosy University. Um, I told them I needed a break. I wasn't ready to get back into another program again. They hounded me to come into the program. Um, but I'm so glad I did because, uh -huh. because it changed my life. In what way? It made me see the um, patterns of my family. Um, and how those patterns affect me as an individual, coming from this side of the family and that side, maternal and the paternal. And um, for, for, for marriage and family therapists, you're all, you know about the genogram. So the genogram right. was probably the most prominent thing. And if for anybody- For those that don't know, it's yeah. like a family tree. Yeah. And going through that and seeing like substance abuse and, and mental illness in my family and and seeing um, the relational patterns that had an impact on me. Uh -huh. And it made me just want to continue more and more into the marriage and family therapy program there at Argosy. So when you're working with clients, <clears throat> I mean, I, you know, I was taught how to do that in school, yep. like a genogram, but I have a hard time like asking the client to make one or either there in the office or for homework. Do you do that often? I do it all the time. It, do you do it right there in the office or I, yep. you do it? So you help them make it, mm -hmm. you show them how and... I go back three generations. We talk about uh, the family history. We talk about was there any type of relational issues between this uncle, that auntie, grandpa, grandma, whomever. And uh, we just dig right on in there. And, and I say, well, tell me how that affects you as an individual, knowing that this was your family history. And that can be very eye-opening for someone. Yeah. Yeah. It surprises me, because you figure they know this stuff already. Why should it be so, why should it be a revelation? They already knew this, right? They did, but they probably didn't go as much into detail as I do. Like, I, uh -huh. I go for the hard-hitting questions, and, and I'm like, oh, wow. You know, especially when, when I do it with couples. I separate the couples in individual sessions, and then bring the couples back, and then I'm like, oh, so you married your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been dating your father this whole time. So it's just very interesting, the family systems. And I think that was one of the reasons why I love marriage and family therapy so much, is we do focus on the family system and how it has an effect on the individual. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, so yeah, I work a lot with couples too. Do you have a particular pattern, like when you first meet a couple, do you see them together first, or do you first meet each one separately? I, I, see, them, I see them together first, and uh -huh. then I separate them for three sessions, and that's just to build a relationship with them. And you separate them for three sessions? Three so, sessions. So you have three sessions with each? Three, ses three sessions individually. With each one? With each three one. Three sessions with the guy, three so or Whomever. The, or yeah. Whomever <laughs> of the couple. Because right. what I'm doing is I'm trying to build that, that therapeutic bond with them Objectively, I guess uh -huh. you would say, because I, I don't want I don't want either one of them to think that I'm aligning with the other one, because that would be it's, yeah, it's very important. Yeah, and uh, it happens anyway, doesn't it? Um, I have to check in with myself, because uh -huh. but I, if I do align, I feel like I'm unbalancing the relationship. No, I don't mean that yeah. you are actually aligning, but that somebody thinks you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I have to I have to make my boundaries very clear with them in the beginning that there, there may come a time where you feel like I'm aligning with you, but I'm actually trying to unbalance the relationship for to create uh, 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 different uh, uh, patterns uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, uh. So you're intentionally taking yes. sides for a certain period of time. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a ticklish thing to do. It is. You could get somebody really angry. <laughs> the dance, I tell you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dance. <laughs> right. So how do you handle this one in terms of, you know, in the beginning when you first see them, they either sign a piece of paper or, or you tell them, or in my case, I do both about confidentiality, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
everything you say here is confidential. There's certain exceptions. You know, if you say you're going to kill yourself with somebody else, blah, 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 blah. Mm. How do you handle the confidentiality? So if you're seeing a couple, do you tell them ahead of time that in the individual sessions, you'll maintain confidentiality? Uh, so a guy tells you, yeah, please don't tell my wife, but you know, I'm seeing somebody else on the side. What do you do about that? And what do you, do you talk about that ahead of time in case that comes up? I say that's, that's going to eventually have to come up in therapy. And that's, that's one of the things I, okay, I will say. Okay, I'm going to do a little role play with you here. Okay. I love role play. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, I, I'm sorry, but that can't. Because that, that, you know, that would be the end of it. She'd leave me. And I really don't want her to leave me. Okay. So what is the purpose of having this affair? Uh, I love this other woman. Mm. Call her Joy. <laughs> She's my joy. But if you're coming to couples therapy, wouldn't you want to work on the relationship that you're in currently? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Yeah, but that's separate. Perhaps maybe we should bring the, the other woman into the, into the therapy session and have a discussion with, with her and your wife. But my wife doesn't know, and I don't want her to know because she'll leave me. She said she, if I ever did that, she would leave me. Doesn't seem fair to your wife. It's true. There was a commitment that was made there. It's true. So that's how I guess I would handle it. Okay. It's, a, it's a very touchy do subject. Do you talk though. about that ahead of time? I do. I, I tell the, the couple that eventually things will come up in the, in the joint session. So whatever you say here, we're going to talk about it. And we'll get through it. But eventually you're going to have to address it. Yeah, so I, I mean, I had something like that happen. Not a cheating thing, but... Um, somebody told me uh, that it was, it was very interesting. It was like an accident, but maybe it really wasn't an accident. This was a couple session, mm -hmm. and the guy showed up, and he said, you know, my wife got mad because I got the times wrong, and when I told her it's really at this time and not that time, she said, oh, I'm not going. But afterwards, it seemed to me that it was semi-intentional because he told me a couple of things that he wasn't ready to tell her yet. Mm. And I think he needed that separate session yeah. to... To process this and everything, yeah. Right. Yeah. But now, and of course, as he's leaving the session, he says, now don't tell her, right? And it's interesting because it's not like he's seeing somebody else, but it's about something that happened two different things that happened between them mm -hmm. that he's not ready to discuss in front of her. Yeah. Right? So it's tricky. I mean, I feel like you do that secrets, well, I don't know if you feel like this, but I have a hunch. Secrets in a relationship are toxic. They are. Right? Yeah. And so eventually I think it's my job to help him get to the point where he's comfortable talking about it with her in front of me. And then also to, to piggyback on that, Steve, I think that, <clears throat> you know, it takes two to tango in a relationship. So there was something that maybe she wasn't doing in the relationship that led him to go in that direction. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm not even talking about a cheating thing. Yeah. Right? Right. I'm talking about, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to get too specific. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't violate confidentiality. Right. <laughs> so I just got a little uh, whisper in my ear. Are we ready to take a break now? You can talk to me again. We are ready to take a break. Uh, don't touch the mouse. We'll be right back with Todd Rents, LMFT, and me. Bye-bye. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Greetings, it's me, Angus McTech, the longtime host and star of Hibachi Talk. Think Tech is important to our community because we bring all kinds of cool ideas and I bring gadgets to the, to the show. So you gotta watch it for sure. But for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can that Think Tech in Hawaii can continue to be public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. And I'm in charge. I've already made my donation, and it's really hard to get this when to make a donation, but I already did. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, thanksforthinktech.cosbox.com. 
Say that three times fast. Closing. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkPack, Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you and warm mahalo for watching ThinkPack and your gen generosity. Let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! <laughs>
All the time? All the time. You know, low level. I mean, I'm not going to kill myself. I don't feel like I want to kill myself. Okay. But it's just like, I just don't get excited about things. Mm. You know? When was the last time you were excited about something? Can't even remember. Mm. Okay. So, where I would like to go with you is, I would like to, to go through your fa family history. I want to know what kind of relationships you had in your past, where this, these visits from depression seem to come from. Mm. So this is where I, I like to look at the system rather than the symptom. Uh huh. Because apparently it's, there's obviously somewhere it came from, right? Did it come from the maternal side of your family or did it come from the paternal side of your family? Oh, they were fine. Oh, they were fine? My parents, you mean? Yeah. yeah. They were okay, you know. I had a pretty good childhood. You know, I went to a private school. You know, I went to college. Went to law school. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't blame for them for anything. Okay. So where do you think you went wrong? Or what path did you take that made you say, oh, I'm depressed, or hello, hello, depression? I don't know. It's just hard for me to, like, I, I'm okay getting to meet people right in the beginning. Yeah. But then it just kind of stops. What's stopping you? Uh, I don't know. People seem to get frustrated with me, like the people at work. Mm. You know, I mean, I've traveled around a lot, you know, and like basically I think a lot of those people are, I don't know, they're very limited, right? They, they grew up here, they, they never leave here. And I've traveled around and I think it makes a big difference when you've traveled around some. I mean, I'm, it's not, I'm not saying I'm better than them, but it's just different, Yeah. right? Sounds like you gotta work on the relationship you have with yourself before you can have relations, healthy relationships with other people. Oh, uh, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> relationship with myself. Relationship with yourself. Take myself to the movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad, a bad idea. Uh-huh. Learn to love yourself and, and start to... Yeah, I don't really love myself. I'm kind of sick and tired of myself. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not happy with myself. So there I obviously was... I'm there... kind of stuck. There was obviously a place where that happened. There had to have been a moment or... Yeah, you know, I don't really think uh, anybody really cared. Mm. Who's they? Well, my dad was busy, he was working all the time. That's what people did back then, right? In the 50s, right? right. And uh, I, I think my mom was kind of, I, I don't know what she was, but she didn't really seem there. Mm. What was their relationship like? They were married forever. They were big uh, Christians and, you know, that was what you did. Mm. And brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got a brother who's pretty much a moron. Oh. <laughs> Younger or older? Ah, uh, he's younger than I am. Younger, so you're, younger. the older yeah. child. Yeah. Must have a lot of responsibility on your plate back in the day. For me? Yeah. I just, you know, my job was to go to school, do all right, and not bother anybody. Mm. So I did that. And your relationship with your, your parents? Uh, I don't know. Nothing special. Do they have high expectations of you? I don't know. What's high? What does that mean? Do they put you on a pedestal or...? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Did they... Because you went to law school, so that's, that's, that's pretty hefty to have yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's not a... It was okay. Yeah. So you really pushed yourself at one point. I did what I had to do. Yeah. You know, I did all right. Did they show pride in your activities? I don't think that was a cultural thing that people did. Oh, okay. You know, it's like, it was just kind of, 
Congratulations. Here's a card. <laughs> they didn't make a big deal about things. That's just not the way they were. No. So they expected people to work hard. They they worked hard, so they figure everybody should work hard. So I worked hard. Yeah. Seems pretty heavy to work hard all the time and not have time to yourself. Well, that's why I used to take a lot of pictures. I used to do a lot of photography. Is that's that the why. stuff you were talking about? Well, yeah, that's a, you know maybe 100,000 <laughs> pictures sitting around yeah. in boxes. You know, I look at it, and like I, I can look at it, and I can tell you what I was doing then. And, and I collect uh, albums, you know, like old 33s. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have the actual physical thing. You can look back and sort of figure out what you were doing when that album came out. Oh. Huh? That's why I don't want to throw this stuff away, you yeah, know, because I like doing that. I'd be interested in looking at those pictures with you and knowing a little bit about your history and how those pictures matter so much to you. Really? I could bring those in? Yeah, I would love to. I would love to see those pictures. Really? Yeah, totally. Wow, that would be nice. Yeah. Oh, but then i got to go through them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trick. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hey, we're on this journey together, right? That's, wow. that's, that's definitely what you, what you which, when you're working with a therapist, that's what you expect, is they're on that journey with you together. So, coming out of this role, yeah. um, you mentioned the archetype thing, mm -hmm. right? The Jungian stuff. Yeah. How would you work with a guy like that, with that? I would, I would explore those, I don't want to say idols, because I think idols is such a bad word in some uh -huh. ways. Symbols? Symbols. Symbols uh, that they, they see themselves as, or, or, or maybe there's like this, ah. maybe favorite movies, favorite TV shows, people they see themselves closely related to in some ah. ways. Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So like if you had your own TV show, what would it be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I really like the way, though, that you... Um, asked him, me, yeah. to bring the pictures in. Because that, that made me feel like it was something special rather than it was just a, some crap I should throw away. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Because they are special. The client is special. I think sometimes we're always looking to just, you know, some therapists, not me, but I think some therapists just want client retention. Mm. And... I want to see transformation, right? And I hope they see transformation, right? And and it felt good, like you weren't trying to fix me, yeah. But you were just trying to ennoble. That's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. Like that's pretty cool. Thank you. I'm yeah. gonna use that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be writing my book now, and I'll be doing seminars, and yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so stay tuned. Uh, it's time for us to wrap up, but uh, he's going to be writing his book. Look for the new uh, Rensian Method <laughs> coming out uh, into a bookstore near you soon. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, Todd Rents, for joining us. It was such a pleasure. Yes, totally. Hawaii, and uh, check in next time. Aloha.